We will need the following completeness criterion for the categories B over G. Recall that a functor U creates limits if and only if, for each diagram D and E, the cone on UD is a limit of UD if and only if there exists a unique cone on D, which is a limit of D, such that applying u to this cone recovers the original limit of ud. We prove the following lemma. If a is complete and the functor g is continuous, then for each b object b, the forgetful functor u from b over g to a, which we recall takes a b over a object af to a, and a b over a morphism h to h, and this creates limits. To prove this, let d be a diagram with di equal to the b over g object ai fi for each i, and let the cone pi from l to ai be the limit of ud. Note that ai is equal to udi. Since g is continuous, then the cone gpi from gl to gai is the limit of GUD. But the image of D in B over G is a cone on GUD. So by the universal mapping property of the limit GL, there exists a unique factorization H in the category B, such that for each I, FI is equal to GPH. This forms a cone on D, and we claim this cone given by PI from LH to AIFI is the limit of D. So let QI from AF to AIFI be another cone on D. Then QI is a cone on UD. So by the universal mapping property of L, there exists this unique amorphism K from A to L such that for all I, PIK is equal to QI. Then since G preserves limits, GK is the unique factorization such that GPI, GK is equal to GQI for each I. Then the following diagram commutes. We have left to show that GK is a B over G morphism. In other words, that GKF is equal to H. By the universal mapping property of GL, since GPI GK is equal to FI, which is also equal to GPI H for each I, which we can see from the diagram on the left and the diagram above, we have GKF is equal to H, which is what we wanted to show. Note that the uniqueness of this limit cone comes from the uniqueness of H above, and it is easy to see U takes this limit cone to the limit above. Therefore, U creates limits, which completes the proof. As a corollary, if we assume that A is complete and G is continuous, as in the situation above, then B over G is complete for each B object B. And it is this result which will be used in the next section.